Huh? But Sat just tell me Saturday. But Moore. Here. O'Kane. Here. Chainer. Here. Scott. Here. Waters. Here. Stand for a moment of silent prayer, followed by a Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Interview for Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Barbara Ann Hukalak. I know, Hukalak, sorry. Hukalak? <laughs> you never know. And let me just say that Barbara was here at 320 with me. <laughs> nice and early. Go ahead, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve. Okay, well, this would be my second opportunity on um, retired physical therapist assistant program director at Western Iowa Tech, previously teaching at USD and other places. I'm very involved in trails, kayaking, hiking, skiing, etc., as well as um, looking at improving the community for just quality of life issues. For myself and maybe grandchildren sometimes, <laughs> sometime in the future. Uh, I think it's an exciting time right now uh, with all of the projects that Parks and Recs have been involved in and also looking at the future, all the things that we can still do to promote the community. Um, I hadn't really prepared anything, but now that I have the uh, He got the up, microphone. The mic, yep, take the floor. Um, some of you know I'm from Canada originally and I was a long time curler. So I'm interested in perhaps a curling facility here. I know Omaha and Sioux Falls do have that, as well as all over Minnesota, of course. Uh, so I have my personal wishes, as well as obviously to see the trails finished and plywood trail connection going. So yeah, it's a, it's a personal thing, but I also want to serve the community. Great. And I, I will tell you, Rob, we have curling down at Cone Park. I've went and cheered on um, a couple of teams on Tuesday nights so went down there, and so it's a really good time. You'll have to come check it out. Not a facility for it yet, right. but hey, they, they definitely have a couple of curling options, which is really fun. I did see that, but I'm, I'm a curling snob. I want <laughs> yeah. proper it's ice. A, it's and proper oh, there you go. Okay. Would that be something, if there were a second sheet of ice at the IBP Center, that that could be utilized for? Uh, it usually or is it even more specific? Facilities, there's one, at least two sheets of ice, but what it requires is an ice maker. And you would have to subcontract to someone from Omaha because there's a special skill to be able to get proper ice in a oh legitimate boy. curling facility. You're talking pro level. I was going to say, we might, no, yeah. I'm talking league. You got to dream big. I mean, <laughs> dream, dream big. big. Here That's we right. go. I That's appreciate right. it. I did see on Facebook a couple of times that somebody or a group of people would like to see a second sheet of ice at the IBP Center. <laughs> they said it was much needed. Right, so right. I was just thinking, well, if there was two of them, maybe that would be a place that you could do that as well. So there must be grants out there amongst the curling community nationally. Well, that'll be your next See. three years project. Yeah, there's your there project. You <laughs> there you go. I'll, I'll let you, I'll let our team know that we can bring in a ringer at some point. <laughs> I'll keep your contact info. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Any other questions? Before? Um, I, I wanted to comment. I really like that you referred to yourself as on the front lines in terms of experiencing parks. I really appreciate that because it can really tell that you have a lot of experience in our parks. The other note that I had here was you brought up um, having an independent pickleball facility. Do you right. have any ideas on, on that? What would you like to see? Well, right now we have a number of facilities. Often they're in church basements or places where they don't have appropriate flooring. Uh, so, like other cities, uh, I think we have enough interest to be able to support a pickleball facility of some type that the city runs as opposed to church basements and wherever they can find. And is this an indoor facility? Yes, because okay. we already have Riverside Park, which has been fabulous. Mm -hmm. 
I have pickleballers over at my place. Oh. Uh, Harry Meadows. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you like Parks and Rec, and I'm hoping that you have a fundraising background because we might need to do some fundraising for that type of stuff for sure. Oh, well, I think, um, yeah, fundraising is a big thing in all of our oh, it wish is. lists. So. Absolutely. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. Go to the consent agenda, which is 3 through 13 F. Consider them to pass unanimously unless a separate roll call vote is requested by the council. Any person wishing to speak on an agenda item should come to the podium at the time that I read that uh, item. If you want to speak on an item not on the agenda, please come up at the end of the meeting under citizen concerns. And please remember to state your name and address for the record and limit your remarks to three minutes. I will move the consent agenda. Second. Three is a reading of the City Council minutes of January 6th, 9th, 12th, and 2023. Four is a resolution accepting the anti-heroin heroin grant to assist the police department with heroin, and heroin investigations. Five are actions relating to civil penalties and suspensions. A is a resolution scheduling a hearing on a $300 penalty against Select Mart for violation of the cigarette law. B is a Resolution scheduling a hearing on a $300 penalty against Sarge's Mini Mart for violation of cigarette laws. C is a resolution scheduling a hearing on a $1,500 penalty and a 30-day suspension of High V Main Street for violation of the cigarette laws. Items 5, D, E, and F are resolutions assessing $500 penalties each against La Victoria's, Chili's Grill and Bar, and Major's Bar for violation of the beer, wine, and liquor laws. Six are actions adopting construction documents. A is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the Floyd Interceptor Sanitary Sewer Lining Project. B is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the Convention Center Meeting Room Updates Project. Seven are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving an industry track agreement with United, with Union Pacific Railroad for the Southbridge Railroad and Co-Link Logistics Rail Spur Project. Mayor, could I ask Chris Myers to please come up and kind of walk us through that as far as the ownership and the maintenance and responsibilities? And this agreement's going to supersede the 2014 agreement? Yes. Correct? Yeah, Chris Myers, Economic Development Specialist. Um, this agreement um, is just an updated version of the agreement that we have with Union Pacific from 2014. Um, instead of adding the uh, new spur that Coldlink will operate on, um, they basically start over with a new agreement that includes, um, includes that spur. Um, we will continue to own all of the track that is outside of the Union Pacific um, right-of-way. Um, and we will continue to be responsible for maintenance. Um, maintenance um, right now is, um, is, is, is the responsibility of our tenant down in, uh, in Southbridge, AgriTrading, who leases our rail yard from us. And um, it will be the responsible of cold link, er, responsibility of Coldlink to maintain um, their track um, once we have a lease in place with them. Okay. So the spur tracks, what's triggered? Yeah, yeah, the new, the new construction down there, okay. um, and there'll be other agreements that come um, with with Union Pacific. There'll be a, um, a, uh, a, a, a an agreement that allows um, th that establishes the uh, um, service between Coldlink and and UP. So we'll be bringing that back. It's they they call that a joint use agreement. So we'll be back with that. Thanks, Chris. Yep. B is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Lane Christensen Company for the Riverfront Wellfield Aquifer Expansion Exploration Project. These are just test holes. These are not the wells, right? Unbelievable. You used to get a well drilled for that. Brad Pitts, Utilities Director, that's correct. It will be uh, two wells into the Dakota Sandstone Aquifer and two wells into the uh, Missouri Alluvium Aquifer. While we're very familiar with the characteristics of the of the ground and the groundwater in that area you know we want to be 100 percent sure that we can turn them into production wells so you will use the same well possibly no they'll need to be plugged 
yeah. they, we can only leave those open for, I believe it's seven day period and then they need to be plugged. Yeah, you gotta fill them back in. Yeah, okay. And then this will help us to decide if we need a very deep well down into the aquifer or if we can use a shallow well. That's correct. And if we have more than one location that we can utilize. You're not gonna, you're gonna be going to the Dakota. I don't even know why you're drilling a short one, but. <laughs> We've, we have both, so we'll, we'll determine. Where do you have a short, where do you have a? Shallow. Your, uh, your big one is. Yeah, that one's shallow. There's uh, two others that are shallow right on the riverbank. Really? Yeah. C is a resolution authorizing release of Morgan and promissory note for SXCIA and a rental deed restriction agreement with X SXCIA and Prime Agency under the Home Investment Partnership Program. D is a resolution authorizing a funding agreement with the IDOT for the West Street Bridge Replacement Project. E is Mark Albanicious. One is resolution approving a contract to Mark Albanicious for the Ruger Park Sanitary Sewer Repair Project. Two is resolution approving a contract to Mark Albanicious for the West Palmer Avenue and George Street Intersection Reconstruction Project. F is RSNH. One is a resolution approving a work order number 57 with RSNH for the T Hanger Development Project at the airport. Two is a resolution approving a work order number 58 with RSNH for the terminal apron rehabilitation and drainage basin reconstruction project at the airport. Three is a resolution approving work order number 59 with RSNH for the Northeast Taxi Lane reconstruction project at the airport. Mike, that, uh, I, d I don't quite understand what you do on these things, but you had, each one of those had a certified testing and then a DGR was included in some of them. Is that all in their fee or then we pay those guys extra? Nope, that's all within that. Okay. Yeah, those are subs of RSH. Okay. Thank you. G is a first class security. One is a resolution approving amendment number four to the service provider agreement with first class security to increase the monthly skyway security costs. Two is a resolution approving a one year contract extension with first class security to provide the Skyway security. Eight items, 8A and B are resolutions fixing the salary of the city manager and the attorney. Nine are actions authorizing payments. A is a resolution authorizing payment to Bainbridge Construction for the Ingleside Avenue reconstruction project. <clears throat> B is a resolution approving a settlement of a tort claim and authorizing payment. I sent an email this morning and asked a question on this and I didn't get an answer. I'm, in fact, I sent it Saturday. On well, I wanna know, how do we know that, that this person didn't turn it into their E&O insurance, number one? And number two, we're paying the whole claim here, if I remember from closed session, is that correct? That's correct, there's no additional contribution on this claim. I just still have a very difficult time with that. I think he's a great guy and that has nothing to do with it, but I just don't, just know that we don't always settle them this way and that bothers me. So I'd like that one pulled for a vote at least. Okay. Yes. Shaner. Yes. Scott. No. Water. Aye. Moore. C is a resolution approving fund transfers for December. D is a motion approving total payments issued for December. 10 are actions relating to property. A is a resolution providing proposals for the lease of land and concessions agreement in the Donner Park Urban Renewal Area, announcing the intent to accept Hertz car rental, rental car and scheduling a hearing on the property at 2403 Aviation Boulevard. B is a resolution proposing to lease Riverside Recreational Complex to the Hesse Foundation and scheduling a hearing. So this, the actual lease will come back at a later date. In two weeks. Okay, won't come back next week because we don't meet. February 6th. Yes. Anyone to be heard? Levin's purchasing. A is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Hyman Incorporated for the fire department turnout gear. 
B is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Allied Lockheed Industry for repair parts and materials for the primary clarifiers at the wastewater treatment plant. 12 are applications for beer and liquor license. See the list. 13 is boards, commission, and committee minutes. See the list. Do you have any questions? Anyone to be heard on any of those items? Passes 5014. Is a motion appointing Rebecca Meyer to the Art Center Board of Trustees. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5015. Is a motion appointing Stacy Alex to the Museum Board of Trustees. I'll move that. Second. <clears throat> Passes 5016. Is a motion representing John Myers to the Museum Board of Trustees. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5-0. 17 is a hearing and resolution adopting amendment number 7 to the urban revitalization area plan. I'll move that. Second. Public hearings now open. Anyone to be heard? Staff have any comments? Anyone to be heard? The hearing is closed. Passes 5018 is an ordinance amending Chapter 26.182 City of Sioux City Urban Revitalization Area Plan by increasing the boundary to include property newly annexed in the city. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5 0. Is anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? No. no. I'll move that. Second. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Move second, third. Second. Passes 5019's ordinance amending Chapter 13.08 Sanitary Sewer Rates of the Municipal Code to increase rate changes for hauled septic tank waste and hauled high strength rate waste. I'll move that. Second. Anyone to be heard? Passes 5 0. Is anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? It would be a problem if we wait two more weeks. No. 20 is the presentation of the downtown infrastructure reconstruction master plan. Good afternoon. Uh, about two years ago, uh, we had a, at our CIP hearing, you guys, we voted on a, uh, or you voted on. Uh, approval of this master plan for the downtown infrastructure and it's to provide a plan for the replacement of the aging water system we have in downtown as with some other infrastructure that we have that is aging out. Um, we wanted to do this so that we were coordinating this with the local property owners and business owners to make sure that we weren't conflicting with their 
future plans and to get their take on the whole replacement. This downtown area is um, from Floyd Boulevard to Wesley Parkway, 8th Street to Gordon Drive. It's just this area is what we're talking about. The average water main age is about 70 years old. The oldest one has been in service since 1886. So uh, pretty old. Um, we've hired JEO and uh, for this master plan and we got Jason Peake here and Derek Cardell uh, with HDR. HDR. He's going to go through his presentation and I'll run this. Okay. You ready? Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Jason Peake with JO Consulting, and uh, thank you for giving me your time today. I just first of all want to say thanks to the staff from Sioux City. You have uh, wonderful staff that have worked with us on this project, and uh, it's been interesting to kind of help and work in your community. Uh, next slide, please. So what I'd like to do uh, is just give you a, a project overview, dive a little bit deeper than what Gordon provided, talk about our process, go over the recommendations, and then and talk about next steps. So as Gordon mentioned, uh, you can see a map here of the, the project area. Uh, this project focused specifically on your underground infrastructure, your water lines, your stormwater lines, and your sewer lines. And basically the, the purpose of the project, as Gordon mentioned, was that we came up with a prioritized recommendation uh, for repair or replacement of this underground infrastructure that was also coordinated with private development interest in the community, other projects that you may have, and kind of lay out that game plan for the next several years uh, as you plan infrastructure and, and development in your downtown area. So talking about the uh, project process, um, that started with an existing project review, talking with your staff, looking at your existing CIP, your comp plan, other studies you had done in the area, like the uh, a rail corridor study, talking with the DOT about projects that they had planned and making sure we had a good picture of where and when the plans were for those existing projects. The other piece was focusing on a development forecast. We met with uh, Marty and uh, local developers and others to just kind of understand what is the sense of timing over the next five years uh, for <coughs> development in your downtown area. And then what I call robust community engagement process. We put together a project steering uh, committee that we uh, did a couple exercises with, kind of understand where they thought the focus should be on infrastructure and repairs in the downtown. And then we also took that same approach out to the public. We had public meetings as well to get that feedback uh, to layer into the, the project about where the community thought. And then the technical analysis, kind of looking uh, at your different infrastructure systems, trying to assess a level of risk, whether that may be age or material, condition, level of service, and then also looking at what's the consequence of failure. If you have a water main in a certain area break, what's the likely impact to businesses, your hospital downtown, those other things that might elevate a, a priority repair for that. And then lastly, layering all those different inputs of information into a prioritized recommendation list. Uh, so on this slide, a couple things I just want to highlight about the stakeholder engagement process. Uh, we we uh, hung out at the park in the summer with a, a tent to collect some feedback during one of your food truck Friday events. And kind of the resulting parts of uh, that year-long public engagement is what's called a heat map, which is the graphic you see kind of embedded there. And a the heat map, basically the blue being uh, more indiv in individual recommendations from stakeholder, but where you see kind of that red and then the white hot being where, you know, that's where you have the overlap uh, with different stakeholder input. So that heat map is kind of your grid system of the city and that more white to yellow is kind of what the feedback of where we heard from stakeholders, infrastructure investment should occur. So no surprise to all of you, kind of the Pierce, Nebraska corridor uh, has a high interest of your gateway places, uh, historic fourth and other areas in the community where you have development. Uh, so it's, it's always good to kind of see that your feedback aligns with that. 
And you know, that was what we used as a basis to also look at the technical analysis. So next slide. Uh, this is a map uh, of your uh, water mains downtown, kind of uh, categorized based on a priority of looking at the what we call likelihood of failure. So kind of what's the chance that that water line's going to occur. The little circle dots is the break history information. So anywhere you see kind of a, a circle dot, that is uh, where we had break information from the city for over the past several years. And so we looked at that likelihood where you're going to see more of those breaks occur. That's based on the age of the line, the material of the line. I have Eric uh, Gardell here with HDR that can speak more in detail to that analysis. But in short, kind of helping us develop that likelihood of failure. And then, as I mentioned before, the other part of that is the consequence of failure. So if we look at the businesses or community that served off those lines, where, where is that going to have a larger impact? So, you know, your larger mains uh, can have a, a larger impact. The last piece of it is kind of that color coding system where the red would be the highest priority lines for replacement based on that risk of failure and consequence of failure analysis. And of course, at the other end of that color spectrum, so kind of red to yellow going to green to dark green, uh, the dark green being just you know, a lower priority, not to say that they don't have risk or consequence, but just lower priority compared to the rest of the system. So there's your technical analysis on the water. The other piece was the stormwater analysis. Uh, the city has a, a parallel project with Black and Beach looking at your storm and sewer throughout the community. So they kind of were tasked with providing us information as they did analysis and these three zones kind of highlighting areas where they basically found uh, that that storm system's not meeting your current, what we call level of service. So your design storm to handle that system, as well as there's some condition issues. So those three areas were kind of identified from a level of service and condition standpoint uh, as needing uh, things of focus. Um, i just pause for a second, Gordon. The other piece I'd say is the sewer information they're working on. It's not complete at this time, so we don't have that information in the report, but we don't anticipate uh, significant findings in that given that you had a, a uh, sewer storm separation project several years ago. So that infrastructure is likely in a better condition, uh, but that's just a footnote that that information will need to be reviewed once it's available to see if it changes any of the recommendations. Next slide, please, sir. So as I said, kind of coming to that prioritized recommendations, you know, that foundation piece, you have this technical analysis going on uh, with the uh, water and the storm, and then at the bottom, that kind of stakeholder input, where do you invest that infrastructure? We layered all that information together, uh, basically to generate the uh, prioritized recommendation list. And so through that process, next slide, please, sir. Uh, if we go to that, uh, we identified 28 projects uh, in the downtown area, basically with an approximate uh, construction cost about 51 million uh, is the current day value of construction of those projects. The color coding on this map, the green basically uh, represents uh, what's planned for FY24. This is a project that's already been bid and will be built this year. Uh, FY25 is the yellow project, and then we basically had three groups of priorities for the remaining projects. Basically, the uh, areas shaded in red would be the higher priority. Uh, group B, kind of the orange yellowish color, would be the secondary priority, and then blue would be the remainder. Next slide, please. So we also have in the packet, just for your understanding, a, all these individual projects listed kind of by their priority. Uh, so this is representing the ones that uh, FY24, 25, that priority group A and B. And then the next slide is the near-term projects. So that's, uh, um, I'll stop right there and see if there are any questions or comments. I have a couple more slides to finish out, but yeah. and pause. Both of those slides there, um, for the work plans, for the different projects. Those are in the CIP, the proposed CIP that we'll be reviewing on Saturday under a downtown infrastructure replacement. So. Do the American Rescue Plan funds 
work into this as well? Uh, with the number one project, yes. Right up there with I, project IP1. At the top? That's the Pier Street. Just that one? Just that one. That's the only one that falls in that area. In the downtown infrastructure. Um, there's an executive summary of this uh, report out there as well as a very detailed report with more information on each uh, project. Also <coughs> within that report we talked about some different funding strategies uh, which many of you are probably aware of but uh, just kind of want to reiterate that as you think about really that's the next steps in this project is we've identified a plan and recommendations so pairing that during your funding discussions with how do you find funds to implement that. And at the local level, you know, that comes from uh, your utility fees or sales tax or other mechanisms available to local government. And then also the ability to le leverage state and federal dollars. Uh, we did talk with the SRF program here in Iowa and, you know, it, that process right now with their intended use plan for those, uh, it's a future possibility, but the current priorities within that system are focused more on uh, public health and public safety type repairs as they allocate those funds. So just to say that, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you're going to get it uh, having to fund this, but there's probably not one source that covers all of your need out there. And with that, I'd stand for any questions. Hundred and thirty six years old? Yes. Ah. We have a water main that's in Morningside Avenue that goes from J to transit that's hundred and twenty seven years old. Hard to wrap your head around that number. It really yeah. is. The year hundred and twenty seven years or the fifty one million? The idea that we have structure with that age you know, on it that it hasn't been taken care of. we still to. relying, yeah, that it hasn't been updated to this point. Mm -hmm. so. Troubling. Mm -hmm. Having been on this committee, it's been a kind of a fun project. You know, you did make it enjoyable when we'd have our meeting, you know, getting to talk about where we would prioritize the help and what would we do if we were given kind of a blank check and you know, what was most important and what did we think as stakeholders, you know, the priority should be given. So it was a, it was a great committee to be on. Um, I think part of the burden is going to end up being on the users. Um, Gordon, did you have a kind of a back of the napkin analogy that you shared with us at one of our meetings? Yes, I did. And I've refined that um, at one of our stakeholder meetings. I just literally wrote it on the back of the envelope or on the agenda and figured it out. But since then, I've refined it because um, 51 million, there's approximately 29,500 uh, metered connections. And just to put it in some perspective that this a project of this size or this infrastructure plan on one side this is not couldn't do this in one year absolutely if, if you had all the money you could physically it couldn't be physically done. you could right. no, this is a multi-year one so we figured probably a 20-year plan to be able to replace or re uh, do all of these projects <clears throat> that are outlined now granted more could show up later but these are the ones that we're expecting um, if we were to do a fee on top of the regular water bill, um, it would come out to something like $7.20 per month if it was a metered service for 20 years. Um, you could also break that down into a water unit cost. If you, because uh, we sell about 5.5 million units of water, each unit 748 gallons. Um, if you were to do that, it would be about 46 cents a unit. That way it'd be user-based. This is for over the whole city, not just the downtown infrastructure, downtown area. This is for the whole city. Um, that 46 cents represents about 11% increase if we were to do it that way. You could do any kind of combination. 
you do a little bit of the monthly, a little bit of the um, per unit. Per unit. Um, that's provided we get no, no additional funding from state or federal. And you also talked about the scheduling of that or kind of what the idea was, and I thought that was interesting as far as when you could bond for that or go for those funds to be able to speed that up, whether you could complete it in 10 years but then have the fi financing over 20. Yeah, I mean, that would all be depend on how the projects are going, too. We yeah, could, availability. You can't overload the downtown area with all these construction projects. I, no, I agree with that, but I do like a 10-year and plan better than I'd like drawing it out for 20 years, but I do like a 20 year repayment plan. Yes. You know, so not to have such a burden um, yep. as far as repayment. So that would definitely be helpful for the downtown to mm -hmm. revitalize it. Right. And of course, when you replace water mains, you got to replace the street above it. So a lot going into it, but yeah, that's, I was glad that Julie asked about that and Gordon kind of sharpened the focus at least on what that cost and funding mechanism could be because I, for one, um, would really want the council's input as far as their appetite and their thoughts on funding this type of an investment in our future because, you know, Gordon and Dave, one thing that they've emphasized to us on the committee, but also I think the council overall is the replacement cycle that we're on uh, to replace um, uh, you know all of our aging infrastructure we're we're running out we're not replacing enough um, that's going to need it and uh, so we need to look at alternative funding mechanisms to be able to afford to make these updates that are necessary and so that's where I want to make sure that we're not relying on 130 year old water mains in our downtown and then they're flooding our buildings or our orpheums or libraries like you're seeing I think we need to be proactive and look for alternative funding mechanisms, whether it's the per unit, such as suggested. I like the per unit a little more than monthly because it breaks it down and makes it a little more palatable for maybe a single user that's not using as much water as, as a larger family or something else. Um, yeah, circumstances can, can warrant different, different usages, and, and I think that that could be intriguing. But I think then that at least could accelerate the replacement of these different water mains and sewers and things like that that, that desperately need attention. But most of the infrastructure uh, reconstruction that we're concentrating on or have been since I've been here um, have always been out in the residential area. That's why I see that this has been not, I don't want to say neglected, but it kind of has because in the 80s, like Jason said, that we had that separation of the combined sewers, so that kind of uh, put things off for a while. The water mains weren't replaced at that time. In some of the areas they were, but not all. Um, that was the unfortunate. While the street was open, it should have been replaced, but... I don't know what the funding situation was back then. It was just as tough to vote for that as it's going to be for this. I was here. I imagine it will. Bad deal we were forced to do by the feds, which we should have been forced to do years before that. But that's that's why it was. There was only so much money, and we were up against federal mandates at the time because we were dumping raw sewage into the river. That's why you're. Most of your sewers are not going to be bad in a lot of the downtown because we had to go through and separate all that at that time. It was all running into a storm sewer, dumping out down, right down on about 3rd and Virginia or wherever down in that area. So. And that was going right into the... Right in the river. Wow. The way it was back in the day. The whole downtown. Mm -hmm. Gordon and Jason, can you go back to page 10 on the work plan, please? Uh, which one's page? It'd be the, I believe, the near-term priority list. Uh, was it the list? The list. Projects? Yeah, oh, page, <laughs> the projects, the work plan, and then the priority group A. Priority group A, What? so what's the time frame on that, Gordon? Is that how many years out? Uh, well, it all depends on funding. I don't have priority any Priority group B is a lower priority, so that would be further out? Right. Why, I, 
Is this like a 20-year plan, though, overall? Well, it's, it's not um, itemized like that on the CIP because there's no funding for it at this point for me to plan for it. Okay. And then the near term, the, the next page would, would be further out? Further out. Further out, yes. Uh, basically, the, the way that we package, say, Group A, which you had similar CIP programs that had kind of that level of funding, the actual kind of implementation of how you do each of those projects just with the, I guess, coordination downtown would dictate whether or not they could be done within a year to two or three within a, a package, uh, just as you think about the traffic impacts, detouring impacts on businesses, but it was really trying to kind of match kind of what you had done within your CIP uh, budgeting. So these aren't necessarily the worst condition? Oh, priority A is. But it, what I would say priority is the, the water mains are, are the driver in it, so kind of that highest uh, risk of failure, water mains and consequence of failure, that definitely increased the priority. So I'd say from a water main standpoint, that's definitely how it's ordered on here. But then we also look, is it, par you know, are you tearing up that street and it's part of the storm system? So maybe that helps move it up a little bit so you're taking care of both those at the same time. All right, so we can make that a package yeah. deal as long as one thing's happening, if something else needs to happen, we're gonna put those together and we're gonna put that as a priority. Yes, uh, Councilwoman. And then the other piece is in the, the actual, the full report, there's a listing. So if that project was on a corridor that you have another project identified within the CIP, that information is also listed. So as staff develops those projects to make sure they're reflecting those other plans that you have in place. But the budget is just solely based on the infrastructure replacement. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. As Dan, that's what we were kind of talking about was what is the timeline or what if we could afford that or what would be the priority. And that's kind of why we came up with working through the regular CIP projects and that process to fund this is, is going to take a lot longer than 10 or 15 years. You know, it could take, take much longer to be able to reach these. And that's why I thought if there was a creative way, like we were talking the per unit to be on top of that, to be able to fully fund this, that then perhaps it could be done in the next 10 years. If you had that additional dollars that you weren't competing against all of the other projects that you were trying to fund. For instance, uh, the second project in 2025, 8th Street, Douglas to Nebraska, that those funds were actually from the annual reconstruction CIP because we had planned on it. And I knew that the, uh, uh, the jail was going away. And when it does get demolished and it's turned over to the city, I wanted to make sure that this one wasn't conflicting project-wise with their, their demo. I didn't want to be in the way of that, but then I wanted a new street there. So when we do something with that property, we have future development of it. Right. That's the reason for that timing for that one. So you're familiar with these water remains. I'm going to ask you a silly question because I didn't know if I should believe this or not. Um, we talked about the age of water remains. We talked about 130 years. Is it true though that some materials that were used for a decade or a couple of decades were much stronger and better than ones that were like water mains that are breaking that were, might be 40 years old or 30 years old. Is there something to that by the materials that were used and, and materials that couldn't be used because of the world wars that were going on? And so we had to make some sacrifices there. We're going to let uh, Derek Gardell, he's our expert. They still have yeah. wood ones, but down by the World Trade Center, didn't they? That is true, though, I, from what I've seen. Yeah, you're wanna, accurate, but yeah. he could definitely can speak and you wanna, eloquent. Yeah, they have wood ones in yeah. New York City. Yeah. It, but, but is there something to that? Was, yeah, especially with the, <clears throat> with the war that was going on and, and the sacrifices that we had to make for materials that weren't available. Is there anything to that? Yeah, there, uh, industry research does suggest, uh, and we've looked at the regional data here, Omaha, Rochester, and Minnesota, Des Moines, Lincoln, Nebraska, and we've done a number of analyses, um, and it, the, the data does suggest uh, that there potentially was an impact uh, with the best material going to the war effort, but beyond that, uh, some of the older cast iron mains were, were installed with vertical pit cast 
manufacturing. So what that means is, is a thicker pipe wall. We began to, to engineer that material over time a little bit more with a progressively thinner wall spun cast iron. So again, uh, what matters there is the, the old manufacturing was thick pipe walls. Over time, we got thinner pipe walls. And uh, so we do see higher break rates often in the um, late 40s. Uh, so as, as cast iron got thinner and thinner, we start to see higher break rates. So it is, it is a little bit confusing at times that some of the older mains of your system fail less often than the, the uh, 60 year old because cast iron. The engineer said we can make it thinner right. and last over long. So you're, yeah. it's your fault, not Yeah, all. we over engineered the material. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's probably more than you wanted, but, but uh, trying to answer the question. But, but there is something to that then, and, and the materials for the war efforts. That's, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate it. The last war we won, though, so it was worth it. <laughs> what else? Any other questions? <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Citizen concerns. Please come forward. State your name and address for the record, please. Seeing none. JJ, you, you want to share something? I'm actually in here today, uh, I'm sure you probably already know, Justin Johnston, uh, 411 Nebraska, apartment 307. I've talked with you guys several times about issues with uh, homeless incidents and things of that nature. Uh, over the weekend, we've actually had over four or five incidents, and every one of the times we did have the police come in. Um, it was a little more scary over the weekend when several other tenants were threatened and had a gentleman actually just found out who he was because he's assaulted a person at the bus station and someone in the skywalk uh, also telling me that he has a lot of family that are going to come and kill me now. Uh, I would like to find out more detail after talking with several offices um, about what fully is on an Eastman um, and what is on there for the other buildings, I'd also like to find out if I could get a copy of Community Housing Initiatives Eastman because the only way that a lot of them are getting in the building now are through that entryway on Nebraska uh, because the only ones that are locking it and unlocking it are Skywalk Security. And I've tried talking with them several times, especially after I was assaulted by a lady um, and when I looked up after being on the phone with 911, uh, the security gentlemen were watching the whole time. And I tried to get them to come down because another tenant was trying to get in the building. I think you met her. She's another one that's on a, has to use a scooter every once in a while for her walking around. But she was too scared to come back down after she assaulted me. And I'm really not sure what else we can do, especially if community housing initiatives keeps referring to the contract with the Skywalk <coughs> and they can't do anything or increase the security. Um, I'm trying to remain calm on this. I'm still a little worn out because I was even talking with another tenant. Um, his son now, after listening to a lot of that and the gentleman screaming the way he was, He's too afraid to come live with his dad now. So, and he's a full paying tenant. Um, I'm not sure what, an, again, this Eastman or contract and why even after talking with a couple other people, an Eastman is more important than the 10 lives remaining living in the building. Uh, we used to have up to 20, but a lot of them have now either passed away or moved because the security level is not very kosher or even I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to say this politely. Uh, if their security is the one that is unlocking our doors and locking it and they can't come down, what type of grant or contract or Eastman can I get with the city to help pay for security for our building. Um, I don't know, Mayor Bob, you might know more about the 
Eastman? And does every building have a different Eastman? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm I think he means like an, an easement. Easement. Oh, like an easement. 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 Your every no. easement is different depending on what the easement's for, but you've got an easement because you're tied into the skywalk. We'd have to have an easement with that building, I'm guessing, right? I, I believe I know which access point he's talking about, and we would have to look at the easement agreement, but I'm guessing that there are certain hours that that stairwell, if in fact it's the stairwell you're talking about, needs to be open um, from street access to the skywalk level. And I can speak with Dave Carney um, regarding that. And uh, I actually got a little bit of detail from Mr. Carney earlier. Uh, again, I'm speaking for a lot of people. I, I've already embarrassed myself enough by looking like a fool coming in here talking like this, but you're fine. Again, this much increasement, and uh, now I am losing the ability to live in my apartment because they're not going to redo my contract because I have been speaking out and even filing a complaint with HUD. Community housing initiatives is retaliating against me and telling me that I have to be out by the end of February. <laughs> and I'm looking at a couple other places, but right now I don't think it's going to fit the income that I have. So I might not even be able to continue helping with the bus stop or bus station um, or doing anything with transportation because I might have to be out of Sioux City by the end of February. The guy out of Spencer owns your building, right? I'm not sure. Again, yeah, I, I, I was Isn't at uh, their right. attorney's office last Tuesday. I think it's the same one that owns up top of the commerce. I was speaking with their attorney on Tuesday. I had Karen Mackey, a lot of my caseworkers, trying to talk to them, but Again, it just kind of looked like a waste of time when they, at their attorney at that office just looked at me and said. Local attorney? Uh, Crary Huff. Okay. John Hines. Okay. Um, again, they, he basically just looked at me and said, you have to be out. So again, you know, I just kind of, I told everybody tonight that I talked to, especially the gentleman that has his son. I would come out and try to find out about the, can I say it again correctly? Easement. 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 I can't say that. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I kind of knew what you meant when you were saying it. Yeah, I was just, the address was out of I've been listening to a lot of different people talk, but that's right. the only thing that I'm trying right. to come in and say is. It's a foreign concept, man. You're it fine. is. And I think what it really comes down to is your building taking ownership to this and providing some security at those doors. You know, whether they give a key card or a, a digital access, I, I'm baffled why they don't. That is the, also the main problem. Again, um, I've tried bringing it up to them this morning. Uh, the it's not that hard. Two people were encamped in our entryway on the third floor and wanted cigarettes and I saw your pictures. Mm -hmm. And I, the police came and even the police officer said that this door used to have lock but now according to the easement uh they can't have the lock and we can't even have a key that locks right, but you also have an entrance on the street to your building right yes and that side actually when the two people that were actually i call it trafficking were bringing in more and they actually evicted them that entryway is more fine but again mm -hmm. a couple of the tenants of disability have a lot sometimes can only use the elevator and can't come up the stairway. Right. So I told a lot of mine would just come in and say, what can we do and what is the indifference contract that they have? Because even the Skywalk security said that even though if something's going on or somebody's right. encamped in our entry, probably stops at the door. they can't come down. Right. And legally, I'm sure they can't. I mean, they probably can't. So we make them keep it open, Dave? Is that the deal? I mean, I don't know why you have to have an opening there. You can go across the street and go up. Yeah, they have a, they have a side. They are, they're, 
They have an easement through their building for providing an access way. It's one of the labeled access ways. Um, I, I recommend that he come to the Skywalk. That's how we have two other ones we're dealing with right now with Mercy and with Home Furniture on the same issue that they want their access way closed. But we've dealt with Central Bank before wanting their access closed or limited and other buildings. And I think the, the board's kind of taken the, the position that they weren't looking to lose access points to the Skywalk. Yeah. And, and I, Skywalk security <clears throat> isn't, you know, they're not a, a force where they can physically remove somebody. They're, right. they're unarmed. No, no, I'm not blaming yeah. them. Yeah, they're, they're more uh, visual, sure. see and report. To, and, and if they have an issue, they call the police department. And I, again, I've been doing most of that and telling a lot of people, um, not just having me do it, because it could make me look like I'm telling lies and not being honest, you know, as many times as I have done it, but it, they've actually started to do it themselves, even the gentleman who has a son. Uh, I actually thought that they were friends of his, but he called me back and said, can you come back here? Because these two people are encamped in our entry. and I'm did do that and building management didn't like the fact that again I'm complaining and so. that that is the challenging part JJ I mean I went down to your building I went through it and talked to some of your neighbors about the situation and I think it's disheartening and it's frustrating because in a lot of ways you feel that you're limited based on your income of where you can live and the programs and the type of place that you need and access to transportation public transportation I think you know that there it's where you choose and you want to live and you want to feel safe where you're at a lot of your tenants felt the same way you know and we have to balance that with uh, people's ability to use our skywalks you know and their ability to go through there but at what cost you know i know you want to feel safe where you're at and i think we need to continue to be proactive in addressing this issue in our downtown i know we have a task force that's done a lot of work on this but it's it's very apparent that we have more to do, you know, if we have multiple people that are asking to close their access, it's not just a housing issue, but sometimes it's a commerce issue, mm -hmm. whether it's a bank or shopping. I mean, it sounds like home furniture and the bank is also requesting this. And, and now we're going to have a lot more apartments um, moving into our downtown, which is an exciting thing, but we need to make sure that we at least get these policies right and are proactive addressing some of these concerns. Hey, Otherwise the it's a problem. Definitely let me know, especially if I am a person of disability and limited on certain things, but I also get Section 8 assistance, and mm -hmm. I'm even getting paperwork in case I have to move to Cedar Rapids or go to Des Moines because I can't really find the area or apartment complex that's going to take Section 8. That's the other problem I have is even looking at Maple Heights because it's right by KWIT, you know, I can just walk up there and help them do the shows and walk back down to my apartment. But I think at that facility, you have to be 62. And, or if they do take section eight, but that was one of the things that they did refer to me today was that it does take housing assistance. But again, I don't know if they're gonna allow someone under the age of 60 live there. Even though I'm a person of disability, I don't know how much is in that facility itself. Someone referred me to go to Aberdeen, but then had another person mention that you don't want to go there because now they're starting to encamp in their backyard and some drug dealing is done Where's the there. Aberdeen at? Central. Uh, can't, uh. Oh, yeah. But again, you know, I'm trying to do all of this and it's getting a little more scary, especially if they're threatening to kill me or other tenants. Do, you lock, do they lock the door at night, though? Uh, they lock the door. They open the doors at 6 o'clock in the morning, and usually that's when they start coming in because they, I think. Oh, they they're might, coming in the morning, not in the night. Both. Uh, I think they learned that the door does not, it locks, but if you pull real hard, it's going to open. And I think they've learned that. And that's how some of them got that gentleman this past weekend. That's how he got in because it was uh, Saturday night at 10 o'clock and 
two of the girls were going down to let their friend up, and all of a sudden I got a phone call saying, oh my God, this guy just threatened to kill me because he was encamped in the entryway, and I, he started yelling a different language, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but when I went back, I, called, I heard him talk, and I called uh, non-emergency. When I came back over there, I was going to go check on the girls to make sure that they got back up or if they were still downstairs. But no, I didn't hear anybody, and when I opened the door, he slammed it back in me. And of course, I went into protection of myself and slammed it back. It knocked him down, and I pulled out my taser that I did get legalized. Uh, <laughs> just making that preference right there. But I told him, I said, if you get up, I'll zap you with the police around the way. So I waited, and the girls came up in the elevator, and I just told them to go away. And they went back down and came up the stairs. When you say they go down to let somebody in, I, is the door locked? On Sundays, the door locks at six, 5 or 6 p.m. on Sundays, because that's when the Skywalk, I think, shuts off. But you can let someone in from the Skywalk if you want? No, that door actually, that big door. That's uh, it, they, right? They lock that at oh, that okay. same time, too. 30. That's why I was also trying to find out the information of other, other businesses uh, like the banks, uh, what times their doors get locked and do they have full access to open their doors uh, to public. And I know it is a public entryway, but when someone's encamped in front of my mailbox and I have to call the police to check my mail, yeah, the Central Bank and U.S. Bank both, they're, they're open the same hours as Skywalk. So Seems they're, like they would all be the same. I mean, they're not all open at the same time because the person physically has to walk right. around the Skywalk and open them all up and walk around and lock them all. So they're, it's not like an automatic system that they're, it's precisely at a certain time, but they start opening them up. That's what we need. Is automated. 6.30 to 10. Or so the I think they start opening them at Saturday. somewhere slightly after 6. They start walking around and opening them and then... They're closing them, I think, probably like the 945 time going around. And I don't know what we can do other than, well, there's not much we can do to your landlord. We can't even get him to pay his payments up front, but I don't, I don't know what we can do. I guess I'm, Bob, you, Chief, you guys got any ideas? I was going to say you have multiple members of the Skywalk Board as well as Homeless Initiative in our downtown that are here listening. So I trust that all of them can probably come up with at least a solution or give us an update and up, let council know what they would recommend. Because uh, I know that one of the members, uh, she actually used to be my housing assistant uh, representative, Tiffany Claiborne, and now she's security and parking. And I've actually kind of showed her, even messaged her a few of the incidents that have been occurring from the time. And a lot of times, uh, CHI does not respond back to me or anything. I just wanted to find out what else we could do or if there was, again, a <coughs> contract that we could try to do for security for us because if half the people have already moved out and a couple of them with the kids are starting to not want to live with mommy or daddy because it is starting to get a little scary up there. And the main reason that they told me that uh, they're not renewing my contract is because I am causing endangerment by telling people to leave and try to protect others. So that's why I'm kind of really confused on what the hell I'm supposed to do here. Rex, were you going to add something? I can't just let there and let them be encamped or because they do defecate in areas, they do urinate in the elevator and Skywalk no longer protects the elevator and CHI has to clean it, but that takes three to five days for business uh, maintenance to come over and clean up the urine or anything of that nature. And then some of the people that 
have the encampment spots where they're putting out their drug needles and food, they can't really get out of the building. Chief, what do you have to add? Uh, Rex Wheeler Police Department, uh, nothing beyond the fact that this is an ongoing project. The district officers downtown, both the three and four district officers are well aware of it. They've been problem solving. They frequently do walkthroughs uh, in the skywalk. I actually hear them get out. Uh, they also realize there's a transition point between uh, overnights and the morning where issues can happen. Uh, they're quite responsive to the security staff. Uh, again, I hear them uh, getting out, but obviously the issue is are we going to be right there when an issue occurs? And as much as we like to have our presence known, which we do, and again, I carry the radio, I hear them out there. Uh, I look at the, the uh, community forum for those officers that work downtown. They mention it frequently. They're dedicated to dealing with it. I've been uh, very amazed at the, and appreciative of the uh, district officers who have been handling the problem. They communicate. Uh, so I think uh, from a standpoint of the police department, we're doing a good job doing our best to at least uh, set the standard that we will be seeing uh, to hopefully um, deter any issues just by our presence, just by the understanding of the folks that might make trouble, that we're going to be there, we're going to be around. Uh, but again, uh, you know, as JJ mentioned, we have to be there when it happens. Right. When Skywalk Security calls us or residents call us um, because of the proximity of the PD, they're going to get a quick response. So uh, I think we're taking reasonable steps, and we'll continue to do that. I continue to share discussions like this that JJ has with me with the district group, and we'll continue to work on it. I wish there was a Band-Aid that could fix everything, but as, as we know, this is just one of those problems that we're going to experience um, with, uh, with our downtown area, and we're constantly working on it, and I'm open to suggest. I feel like a lot of the components of this puzzle are working together, but I almost feel like the building owner is the missing key here, is, is not kind of stepping in and installing those locks and that security system. I think that would help greatly, but I and, uh, don't think the city can force that, gentleman, nor can we pay for security for a privately owned building either. Uh, the one gentleman uh, said that he has talked to the building manager about doing that too, but again, they are referring mm -hmm. to the uh, contract that the Skywalk has with them and you know they're kind of constantly return, returning that as their reason why they can't do anything as blaming the Skywalk security mm. I mean I myself was kind of confused when I was originally filing a complaint about them and I looked up some of the things on their website and they're building a 4.5 million dollar new parking complex in Spencer or uh, another facility in Iowa, I'm like, why are you spending $4.5 million on a new place when you can't even get new doors for us or clean up after the person, especially when they number twoed in our stairway? But it took me and another tenant to clean it all up because nobody would come and do it for two days. I could tell you why, but then these guys would report it and I'd get sued, so we're just going to leave it there today, okay? Yeah. Keep calling the police, and, and I would encourage you to go to the Skywalk Committee and give you the time. Yeah, he's actually, I actually spoke with him about that, and he did give me that information. I just told several other tenants I would come and talk today because, again, he almost didn't want to come over and be with his dad today because of this, so... And he said if he actually sent an email to business management or the building management, because uh, he is actually starting to get more upset than I am. And <clears throat> there's two tenants that actually have children. And that's the other part of the reason, you know, I'm not Uncle JJ, but they like to talk to me when we're doing our laundry and doing things, you know. It's almost like a family in there, but we've known each other and been there for many, many years, and they're starting to get upset because of the fact that, no, I'm not going to be able to live there anymore from protecting them from what I could. And again, a couple of the tenants are disabled, and one gentleman is mentally challenged, but I'm being made out to look like I'm endangering them because I'm starting to tell people to go. 
All right, keep us up what we can do. Thank you, sir. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Anyone else be heard? Mr. O'Kane. I'm going to try and keep it pretty short and sweet. Um, I'm not overly excited with how, uh, how the, the Hess lease went. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, Dustin Cooper will be uh, an asset to work with Westside Little League. Um, I, uh, I don't want to see their organization get pushed further and further out of town, so I have some, some reservations about that, but I'm going to remain hopeful. Um, the only other thing I wanted to do is give a shout out to um, Streets. I, it is not often that I hear this many compliments about um, how clear the streets were, how quickly after the snow. They worked long, hard hours. Um, and I was just amazed the next morning that I got up and on the streets. The streets were cleared. They kept them cleared. Um, and it was such a quick turnaround time. Even my mom, who lives on West 5th Street off of Castleman, who normally doesn't see a plow for at least a few days, had a, a street cleared and ready to go. So that, I'm sure, translated to a lot of different areas in town, but uh, hopefully our accidents weren't nearly as high as we thought they might be. Um, and I'm very grateful for them, for everything they do. And that's everything. Even a famous radio personality that I had lunch with today complimented me on the streets, so. Julie. I was going to compliment the streets as well. I got some good emails, uh, two actually, about the streets, a couple of private messages that they were happy with that. Um, snow emergency came at the right time, and I think it was lifted at the right time. So I think everybody did a great job there. Kudos to the street department for getting it cleaned up and keeping it really nice. Um, I have a few different things. So first and foremost, I wanted to pass along this opportunity. I know um, it went out through Iowa's West Coast Initiative. I know it went out through Downtown Partners um, and a couple other different areas, even the Chamber of Commerce included it in their update. Uh, but I want to let people know that there's actually an opportunity for um, a free digital marketing program for small business owners. Um, that Morningside University, there's a class that's actually working through it led by a professor, um, one of our marketing professors that is just looking to get real world experience for our students, be able to work through a program with them. Uh, we're looking for 10 small businesses that would be interested in really expanding their digital marketing platform. And so it would be, it would actually start as, as soon as it would start on February 6th. There would be three, three week online module and then there would be an ending face-to-face -face session where they would talk about the results and what they were able to produce. So if you know any small business that's interested in increasing their marketing presence um, I, digitally, I think that this is something worth taking advantage of. And so let me know, reach out to me, um, or, or yeah, and I can put you in touch with the right people. Did you say no fee? No fee, completely free. Oh. They're just trying to get the students some more experience. So yeah, please take advantage of this opportunity. I think we had a lot of great small businesses um, that could hopefully in, in, use a little bit of help maybe for digital marketing. I know when we had the Tyson internships, that was always the number one thing that people, nonprofits or different things needed a lot of help. So I know there are a lot of small businesses that could benefit from this as well. Next thing that I wanted to say is, um, uh, while I very much so appreciate the clean streets and our crew working extraordinarily hard to, to keep them uh, clean and keep them that way, I would remind people, and I almost called um, or texted a couple different news stations to maybe do a news story about this and a reminder. I was driving down, and did I call Dave? No, I called Daryl Bullock. And so I was driving down Lakeport and I was kind of um, shocked to see a gentleman in a power wheelchair driving down the middle of the right hand lane um, to be able to, and this was at the last snowstorm, not this most recent one, um, but was driving down the middle of the lane um, across from Grace, United, or Grace Cemetery and it was because the sidewalk was not cleared off. And so I just wanted to take an opportunity to really remind people of the impact that that can have. 
um, that we really want to make sure that people are clearing their sidewalks out in front of their streets because I see school children all the time when I'm heading to work I see them slipping and falling on sidewalks that aren't cleared off and I would remind homeowners it's their responsibility they need to get out there and be able to clear those off whether it's school children or people such as myself um, trying to use a, a sidewalk gosh I have a lot of trouble a lot of times with curb cut areas you know because then the plows go through and it fills in that entire area so we need to look out for our neighbors look out for those other individuals that are maybe trying to navigate those sidewalks and just remind citizens um, to really please heed that call and that warning and, and be proactive for for the sake of their neighbors I know I appreciate it um, yeah, the last thing I guess I would just say is I, I too remain hopeful, uh, Matthew, about the, the lease. I, I spoke with both the gentlemen still here in the back as well as um, Mr. Cooper over this entire um, saga, and I'm hopeful. I'm, the mayor will always say hope springs eternal. I, I, hate that, I hate that it played out the way that it did. I think that... Um, I think that I surely learned a lesson um, in how hopefully we can continue to work together a little more proactively um, and understand where each other are coming from um, before taking action or before doing different things. I think getting the whole story is always important on so many different sides of things. So I'm hopeful for the future and excited for the, the youth um, of our community to have a couple different options and things that they're gonna be able to pursue. Hopefully they continue to grow and, and expand all of these operations. So I'm looking forward to it. That's all I have, Mayor. More. Thank you, Mayor. I want to thank um, the NAACP and Ike Rayford for the Martin Luther King Jr. celebration they held a week ago tonight. Um, it was a great program and great presentations that were made and a lot of important reminders of where we've been, where we are, and where we're headed. So thank you for that. Uh, I also agree that the street crew did a phenomenal job and appreciate all the hard work that they did do. Um, I'm probably, this is probably just me and I must have missed it, but I just didn't think we did very good with our snow emergency. Uh, parking on the odd side for the odd uh, days, parking on the even side for the even days, and do the plows still come by and, and bury the cars that are properly parked on one side or the other? Um, I didn't think we did a good job of advertising about the, the emergency and, and what takes place. Now, granted, what did they say? This is a big snowfall after five years ago was the last one we had a, a large one, but I just, it, it just didn't seem to run as smoothly as I would like for our residents. You mean the actual part? Hope we can do better. Just overall, just oh. with the notice of the emergency, it started at 12 noon, I think, Mayor, on uh, Thursday. Thursday. 12 noon and Thursday, and then they pulled it off. It's just, it was just an observation. It was like a lot of us didn't know for sure how that was supposed to work. And I think in the past, when we used to get frequent snowfalls, we did a good job of telling the media, the news, and, and the mayor had put out statements about this is the way it's supposed to work. And I just didn't see that this Because after last year, we're out of practice, right? We're terribly out of practice on it. But that's just an observation. I mean, we can, we can do better. And it's not, a, it's, it's not being critical of anyone that, that put it together. It was just, uh, it se seemed like we had some we just had some missteps is all on that. Uh, I want to thank Chief Mueller uh, for your comments today on the citizens' concerns about what's going on downtown Sioux City. Um, it is ongoing. There's no magic what needs to be done. It just takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. And you're so right that if you're not there at the right time, because I've been in those situations where I wish you could have been there just like that. And it's just the nature of those things happen quickly. So I feel your pain too, because I've, I've been involved in some of that as well. And, and we'll continue, but you know, we're, we're making some progress. We, we don't have, and our chief points this out frequently, we don't, we're not immune from anything going on in this community. Don't get me wrong, we're not immune, 
but we do a lot of things right and we don't have a lot of the issues that other communities have um, for the hard work that we're doing. You might disagree with me because of your recent experiences, but just overall, I think we're, we're making the right, we're taking the right steps, we're having the right discussions, and we have a, a chief of police that's very, very open and, and very, wants to be as helpful as he possibly can be, as does the mayor and as does the council. We're all in this together, for sure. Um, I think that's all I have. Are we starting at 8.30 on Saturday for our capital improvement program? 8.30 Saturday morning. I'll see everybody then. Thank you. That's all I have, Nick. A couple of things. One, I, I need to publicly apologize for the not making the NAACP. Didn't get there, and I really feel bad because that is one thing I do enjoy going to every year. I let them know that you were tied up, though. I know, but it was really yeah. Um, and I know police officers are busy, but I drive around town now, Chief. Car after car after car with snow on them haven't moved. Some of them still buried, and we do, we just leave them there for the next snowstorm. I just have, I've always struggled with that. I don't know. How you can drive a district and see a, a car that's been in a snowbank now for a week. We got to get a system if those cars are obviously abandoned. And I'm not going to, I mean, I can give you 15 of them that I drive by every night. That's why I really struggle that we can't do it. But well, many, many of them are tagged now, or not tagged. No, they're not. They have tow stickers on Jackson. Driving down Jackson. Jackson, I saw well, six or seven. Okay. Drive, drive. That's good. Then that guy's paying attention. But they're all over town. It isn't just Jackson oh, yeah. Street. Yeah. Anyway, that that's one thing I wish they could do a better job of. And it's obvious they haven't moved if there's still snow on top of the car. That's pretty obvious. Lastly, I would, you know, I thought somebody would ask for a boat on Riverside, but they didn't. So that's fine. That. It's not the final say. We do still have to approve the lease. So if you have some reservations, I think it's incumbent upon you to meet with Dusty and, and express those so that he fully understands them. I've done that. and It wouldn't be the worst thing to hear <coughs> from more than one person. So I move we adjourn. Second. <coughs> Shaner. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Moore. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Aye.